A sweet face-off happened over the weekend between two soulful singers and Michelle Obama even showed up. Uh, we'll give you a taste of it coming up. It is Monday. It's May 11th and this is The Current Music News. Hi, I'm Jade. And I'm Jay. Soul singer Betty Wright has died at age 66 after being diagnosed with endometrial cancer. She just had one big mainstream hit, but she has a vast legacy in funk, disco, and R&B. That big hit was Clean Up Woman, which hit the top 10 in 1971 when Betty Wright was just a teenager. Now it's recognized as a pivotal track in the evolution of funk into disco. After that, she had less visible success, but extraordinarily persistent success. She did everything. She was lead singer, backup singer, songwriter, producer, arranger, you name it. She worked with everyone from Bob Marley to David Byrne to Jennifer Lopez. She was actually one of the first pop singers to work in the high-pitched whistle register, which you now associate with Mariah Carey. She was really proud of her role as a mentor to younger artists. She said, quote, I built the sandbox, but I watch him play in it. A clean up woman is a woman who gets all the lovely girls keep behind. Uh, another sad story music executive Andre Harrell has died at the age of 59 due to long standing heart issues. And you know, Andre Harrell, because in 1986, he founded Uptown Records. Uh, that was a crucible for hip hop and R&B, sort of bringing those two worlds together, uh, nurturing artists like Mary J. Blige, Jodeci, uh, Guy, Al B, and uh, probably most famously, Sean Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. P. Diddy. Uh, Harrell was actually a rapper himself. That's how he started in the business. But when he started working for Russell Simmons, he realized, oh, wait, I love management and the marketing of artists and trying to figure out how to sort of like perfect the persona, the brand of artists as diverse as, you know, the kind of seductive rapper Father MC and the fun loving guys, Heavy D and the boys. Uh, so, that kind of that mix and meld of bringing those worlds together. And it's actually through Heavy D how he met Sean Combs. Harrell later went on to lead Motown Records and he worked in film production, including a project that he did with Sean Combs, who actually applied for that very first internship by saying he'd wash cars, he'd quit school, anything for a priceless chance to be in your presence. In the wake of Little Richard's death, it's no surprise a lot of artists have been sharing tributes to the influence of one of rock and roll's originators. But here are some words I didn't think I'd be saying today. Bob Dylan took to Twitter to share a really heartfelt tribute to Little Richard, using words that are a reminder both of Little Richard's vast influence and also the fact that Bob Dylan didn't get his start as a guitar strumming folky, he got his start as a piano pounding wannabe rocker. On Twitter, Bob Dylan wrote, I just heard the news about Little Richard and I'm so grieved. He was my shining star and guiding light back when I was only a little boy. His was the original spirit that moved me to do everything I would do. Here at The Current Music News, uh, we paid tribute to Little Richard with a special episode that came out over the weekend. If you missed it, you can catch it on YouTube or Facebook. And going back to those video streams that we've all been watching, uh, social media is the way we're getting music these days, uh, you have a tendency to notice that some musicians have a much better home setup to be able to produce those live sounding sessions so that they have a good quality. Well, if you've got a lower quality setup in your house, there might be a solution that feels good for the times because if you're gonna go into a recording studio, uh, you have to bring in your whole band and you're gonna be breathing close quarters. You can't really record an album in a mask. It's a little difficult. So uh, these LA entrepreneurs, Christine Heffenbetcher and Kenny Moran, they're seeing this rising demand for services of their company, which is a roll-up recording studio. 
So it's called Mobile Sessions, and it's basically this RV recording studio that will come to you wherever you are. That's uh, got a control room, it's got a lounge for you. It basically does everything except for maybe record drums, which, hey, just put in a couple of cables, record it in your basement, you're good to go. Uh, Rolling Stone said that the RV has already hosted sessions on a beach, in the mountains, and at $2,000 a day. That's actually cheaper than most recording studios uh, would ever rent to you anyways. So Moran, one of the founders, he said, by and large, the bulk of musicians aren't going to make platinum selling records, and they're not going to be having a million downloads. They're going to record this album, they're going to put it out, and then they're going to go on tour and try and push it. And he said, we want to help. So we're going to be as flexible as we can with a truly, truly independent artist. That's today's music news. We'll be back with another update. So like and follow us. You can be sure to catch it and listen to The Current on your radio, on your smart speaker, on our app, on our web stream. And click on the comments to let us know what music news stories are meaningful to you right now. So in these two months of live streams, Jade, have you seen anything online that's made you think, huh, I really did not think I would ever be seeing that. Uh, I actually have had a couple of moments where I'm like, really? Really? Harmar Superstar reading, uh, you know, uh, acting out an entire movie? Sure, that was not actually what I originally thought, but I think that's not where you're going with. Yeah, well, so I'm talking about what you referred to earlier, Jay, this kind of remarkable collaboration that happened on Instagram Live on Saturday night. Neo Soul stars Erica Badu and Jill Scott went head to head in basically a live stream DJ battle where they spun their own hits. Sometimes they sang along, they bantered, they talked. It was amazing. And it went on for the better part of three hours. I guess we'll keep this going. Um, I'll, I'll go with my first single off of my first album. Um, I wrote the treatment. We shot it, Chris Robinson and Jesse, uh, why can't I remember his last name? Don't kill me, Jesse. Don't kill me, Jesse. Jesse. It was uh, our first time together. We fought like cats and dogs the whole damn day. And um, <laughs> it, it turned out, it turned out great. I was mostly uh, pleased and, and really happy with what came out. So here we go. <laughs> Shot right there in North Philadelphia. Yellow Del Five. Two one fifth. North Shout out Phil. To Del Five. The whole family, Yellow <laughs> Del Five. You can't get in the way of what I'm feeling. Hey, hey, hey. 